According to reports, shoulder dislocations account for 50% of all major joint dislocations. Dr. Jay Park, an emergency medicine physician in New York City, wants to share a new method of reducing a dislocated shoulder without the use of conscious sedation. Here's a diagram of the shoulder. The head of the humerus is connected to the glenoid fossa of the scapula, like a mechanical ball and socket joint. Let's simplify the shoulder joint by describing the humerus as a lollipop and the glenoid fossa of the scapula as a shallow cup. When a shoulder is dislocated, the lollipop has slipped off of the shallow cup and the head of the lollipop is situated below the lip of the cup. A simple, non-invasive method of placing the head of the lollipop back into the cup is the following. 1. Pull the head of the lollipop away from the cup so that the lip is not structurally obstructing the head of the lollipop. 2. Place a fulcrum underneath the lollipop. 3. Push on the tail of the lollipop to lift the head of the lollipop to the top of the cup. 4. Tilt the cup towards the lollipop as needed. How will this look in a real life situation? 1. Place the patient sitting upright in a stretcher at 90 degrees. 2. Bend the elbow 90 degrees with the forearm supinated. 3. Gently place your fist under the axilla. 4. Apply a gentle, constant downward pressure to the elbow and pull the head of the humerus away from the lip of the glenoid fossa. 5. Apply a gentle, constant adduction pressure to the lateral epicondyle of the elbow to lift the head of the humerus above the level of the glenoid fossa using your fist as a fulcrum. 6. Additionally, you may ask an assistant to apply scapular manipulation to move the glenoid fossa in closer proximity to the humeral head. 7. Finally, you may ask an assistant to apply downward counter pressure to the contralateral shoulder to keep the patient's shoulder straight. At this point, the dislocated joint will spontaneously reduce itself. Your patient should not experience significant pain during this procedure. Any force applied should not exceed that of a firm stretch. You may need to apply a steady stretch to the shoulder for at least 30 seconds. In the next video, we'll show you a live patient demonstration of the procedure. Thank you for your attention.